Okay, Frank Bernardo here for Low Kick and May. Joining me today is Harry Hunsucker, ahead of his upcoming fight with Tyson Pedro at UFC 278. Harry, uh, thanks for your time today. How have things been since we last spoke? Uh, you know, I've been doing really good, man. Um, you know, me and uh, the family are doing good. Everybody's staying healthy. Uh, my gym, I, I just par- purchased my gym. I've been teaching at the martial arts school that I uh, ended up purchasing for about 10 years. And I had the opportunity to become available to me to purchase it and buy it out, man. It's been a huge hit. And, um, you know, the drop to 205 has been great. So, like, everything, I mean, everything's clicking, man. Everything's doing good right now. 100%. Yeah, let's talk about um, the, the gym, first of all. Hurricane Mixed Martial Arts. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, it look, looks like you've done the whole sort of shebang. Like, you've got the the outfits, the, you, even like the own color scheme. How, yeah, how has the whole, like, the trans- transition been? Um, It's been really cool. I actually, like, literally just walked out of the gym <laughs> and, like, we got the last final touches of everything done just now um got the last bit of logos on the walls and the last decals done so um i mean it's been it's been an amazing switch over my community here has been super supportive my families that have been involved with me for years have been super supportive and it's just it's 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 going it's not i couldn't ask for it to go any better man awesome um is, uh, what, what's the sort of the gym stable like there at the moment? Um, so anyone that we should keep an eye on for the future? Uh, so right now, I mean, we, we've we always been a karate school, right? Mm-hmm. You know, over the past 10 years, as soon as I took over, we kind of transformed into a kickboxing and MMA gym. Okay. Um, if I was to give you one, one guy to look out for, though, is we got Tony Scott down here. And um, he's actually the guy that got me started in MMA way back in the day. He is 12 and 0, 13 and 0 as an amateur, and he'll be making his pro debut soon. Um, you know, my buddy Trent Knott, he's going to be making his pro debut soon. So we got a lot of lot, lot of things on the horizon, man. And um, you know, good good things are coming. That's awesome. Um, uh, another sort of, uh, I suppose, new <laughs> caveat of your life as of late. Uh, is this documentary even a part of right hurricane yeah. season rising underdog i've sort of struggled to <laughs> find any footage of it over here in the uk but um I just tell yeah, us a bit about that whole yeah so i had these guys approach me with the opportunity to you know follow me around for a year and a half mm-hmm. basically and film my life and film my training and film my prep for the fight this uh next weekend and um you know right now um there's no footage of it available as soon as my fight's over it'll be Uh, available there's just some there's some pretty fight specific stuff in there and there's some tight knit stuff there's some tight knit details that we don't want anybody to get their hands on until after the fight is over um so it'll be out streaming on amazon prime um soon as the fight's over i think they've got it scheduled to go on on august 21st so literally the day after the fight it'll be available so awesome that'll be a great watch um and then uh, as you mentioned at the very start um <laughs> yeah another big change uh is, is the drop down to two or five pounds uh to light heavyweight um how has that change impacted your training camp um and what sort of changes do you envision it having on your actual um what ability to perform in the UFC to come? Yeah, for sure. You know, obviously t- taking that extra weight off my body is going to put it in a better state to perform. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be giving up 50, 60 pounds to guys like I have, you know, pretty much every fight since I've been a heavyweight. I mean, Tapa, my last fight, he's the first UFC heavyweight in history mm-hmm. to miss weight, you know, and um, he had 50 plus pounds on me on fight day. Now, you know, the cut to 205 really has been easy for me. And, you know, once I got to um, the PI for my fight last time, they were like, you should really be dropping to 205. But it was a little too late. You know, at that point, I was there to fight that weekend Um, because I was I mean, I was walking around and I still had a lot of fat on me at 235. You know what I mean? And I fought healthy at 235. I don't cut any weight at all, you know. Um, And then, you know, I'm even in the playing field. You know, I'm not giving up weight and height anymore. I mean, I know Pedro's got a little bit of height on me, but I'm definitely going to be the thicker, 
you know, stronger guy, I feel like. But, you know, it just it, it made sense. You know what I mean? And unfortunately for me, I heard a lot of people over the past couple of years. Oh, you should drop the 205. You should drop the 205. Whenever I realized I should drop the 205 was in the middle of that fight with Toffa when I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, he's a lot bigger than me. Fair enough. Um, and then this, um, yeah, the start at 205, uh, you're going to be making, well, you're going to be opening the, uh, what well, looks like the main card, the pay-per-view card of UFC 278. Um, uh, does that, what are your feelings towards that? Does it add pressure or does it, uh, I guess, incentivize you? Yeah, I mean, you know, let's be 100% honest, man. All the pressure here is on Tyson Pedro. You know what I mean? He's the, he's the, um, he's the show pony right now, dude. I'm just the guy that they're bringing in to fight him. You know, we know what it is, dude. And whenever I show up and, you know, whenever I show up as the guy I'm going to show up as next weekend, man, there's going to be a lot of heads turn. I'll just say that. 100%. Well, I mean, you, you you say that, but at the same time, it also is just incredible matchmaking in that you've got two guys. Um, I think he's all but one of his fights have, have not gone the distance. And obviously, all of yours, you've never gone the distance. So, you know, it's two guys who are going to go out there and just leave it all in the octagon. Um, yeah, ha- <laughs> it's almost pointless me saying how do you envision the fight going because I imagine <laughs> it's not going the full three rounds this time. Um, yeah, yeah I, I honestly, I honestly think you'll see this fight go a lot later than anyone would expect to. Okay, um, because he's going to get frustrated because he's going to have to do a lot of moving to keep up with me. You know what I mean? So I think that it's going to be. Um, I think I think this would be a very surprising fight for everyone to watch. Okay. Um, when you look at Tyson himself, uh, what what's your sort of like uh, breakdown of him as a, an opponent? Um, you know, I, I I don't ever have anything against anybody I fight. Obviously, he mm-hmm. seems like a cool dude, man. You know, um, you know, maybe like I've had a beer with 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 Bam Bam. I've had a beer with Tafa. Maybe you know we can make it three in a row beers not losses but beers <laughs> um and, you know and maybe me and him can have a drink but you know he's a he's a very athletic tall lanky guy um you know and he he's he's very talented he's you know he's gonna be a, a big name in the sport you know 100 percent um you are you sort of alluded to it before you are a big underdog uh in this fight uh, and it seems somewhat appropriate due to the documentary title. Um, do you feel disrespected at all by how, how sort of wide that line is? Nah, man. Listen, where I'm from, dude, if if you make it to where I've made it to, you're a success, man. But, you know, everybody around me has been like, well, you made it there. That's good enough. That's bullshit, though. You know what I mean? That's not enough for me, and that's how I got where I'm at. So, like, I mean, obviously – you know, being the underdog has been a part of my life, so it doesn't scare me at all, man. There's been many a times I've been the underdog in life and came out on top. It's just, you know, there's a few of these that people have seen that the, the world's eyes have been on and I've dropped the ball. I mean, you know, I've hesitated. I will not hesitate this fight, man, because that's what costed me. That's what costed me with Tafa, dude, is I hesitated. I spent that fight trying not to get knocked out instead of just going out there and fighting, you know what I mean? And that stops guys. I mean, if you look at whenever I fought Jared Vandera on the contender series, that guy is who I really am as a fighter, but I didn't have the gas tank to support it because I'd been sitting on the couch drinking beer for two weeks before that fight. So I didn't have the cardio to support the fight that I knew I could take to him. So you're, you're going to see the best version of me that there's ever been. Now, will I lose or will I win? It's a fight, man. It's a toss up. Anytime you get in a fight and I'm not one to sugarcoat it and act like, oh, there's no way he can beat me because we're fighting on the pinnacle of fighting. You know what I mean? But I know that I won't hesitate. I know that I'm not afraid. Anytime that the UFC's called me, I'm the guy that stepped up whenever nobody else would. When nobody would fight Bam Bam on four days notice, I did that shit. Whenever uh, Tafa was the first UFC heavyweight in history to miss weight, I still fought that motherfucker too. 
Yes, he did. And as, soon as, they, and as soon as they called and they said Tyson Pedro is the fight, I said, well, all right, that's fine, man. Let's go. I don't say no to fights, dude. I never have said no to a fight. I've got to say, I feel like there's a... Having spoken to you before the Tarpa fight and speaking to you now, there seems like a sort of underlying level of just self-confidence that maybe wasn't as prevalent before. Yeah, I mean, well, I was just trying to be humble, man. And I and I was just... I was a different guy, man. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm different now. You know what I mean? And a lot of that is is... I know, I know what's going on here. I know why I'm here. I know why they called me for this fight. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not stupid, dude. I know how this shit works and I know what they're trying to do. And I'm going to spoil everybody's plans. Love it. Absolutely love to hear it. Um, we're going to switch away from that fight for a moment. Um, headlining the event is, uh, is that welterweight title fight. Now, obviously, as a Brit, I got a, a big personal interest in that one. Do you think Leon Edwards has a chance to um, to d- defeat Kamaru Usman, become the second UFC, uh, second UK fighter to to claim gold? There is always a chance, man. <laughs> I mean, Usman is a hell of a mountain to climb, but yes. I mean, you know, it, it's not to say it can't be done, man. I mean, he's been beat before; it's been a long time. But I mean, everybody everybody can lose, man. Hundred percent. Um. I also want to get your thoughts on um, Bam Bam, his upcoming fight with Cyril Garn. Uh, obviously, he's an opponent you've shared the cage with before. Uh, they're going, going head-to-head in UFC France, the, the first ever UFC event in France. How, how do you think that play out, plays out? Um, man, listen, I would say that everybody is betting on Cyril Garn just because he's a safe bet. Mm. But Bam Bam knocked out Derek Lewis. Bam Bam has been doing his thing, man, and I'm a huge supporter of his, even though he whooped my ass. You know, I'm a still a I'm still a huge supporter of his, man. So I hope to see I hope for nothing but success for that guy. One hundred percent. Um one last question for me then. Um how does Harry Huntucker get his hand raised at UFC two seven eight against Tyson Pedro? It doesn't matter how, man. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I put in the work. I, I did my thing. The results are going to pay off. It's just going to be about what opportunity presents itself in the fight for me to get the finish. Because he's going to be super confident coming out. And the longer that that fight goes, the longer that I survive, the more it starts to tilt in my favor because he's going to start getting nervous because he's not got the finish yet. You know what I mean? Because he's going to, you know, he's going to come out wanting a performance of the night bonus and get a quick knockout. You know what I mean? So the longer that I survive and the longer that I make him sweat, the more mistakes he's going to start making. 100%. Brilliant. Thank you, Harry. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today. Um, I, we've already plugged you, Jim, but if there's any sort of social media and whatnot um, you'd like to give a shout out to, the floor is yours. Yeah, just give me, uh, if you want to give me a follow on Instagram, my tagline is at hurricane underscore Hunsucker. You guys give me a follow there. You can see updates on my life. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, there's loads on there, including Harry's um, upcoming documentary that we spoke about before. So make sure to check that out um, after UFC 278. Thank you, Harry, and best of luck in the upcoming fight. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.